to share a story of my journey in a land which inspired me so much that I thought I could change the world. Only it ended up changing me instead. Ladakh. Ladakh is a region a lot of you may have gone into. However, imagine, imagine you're going on a solo trek somewhere in the high altitude regions. Imagine you're out of breath and imagine that there is absolutely no connectivity and absolutely no one to talk to. Only, I didn't have to imagine it, I went through this. Here are some images of Ladakh beyond what you see in the tourism hotspots. <coughs> Ladakh is about 45,000 square kilometers in one district and 15,000 square kilometers in another. Except the 60,000 square kilometers is home to just about 300,000 people. That makes it a population of three people to one square feet. And looking at that, it's extremely sparsely populated. Villages in the remote Ladakh region are like this, extremely isolated. Distances between houses can take you an hour to reach. Distances between villages could be few hours. Distances between villages could be a few days. These are the villages that no one knows exist. These are beyond the few tourism places that most people would like to go to. The beauty of the land is that people don't want to move out. I was in a trek here in this region without really understanding the region very much. June 2010, I went on a solo trek, my first trip into Ladakh, and I decided to do a solo trek. As I was walking these villages, I suffered from pulmonary edema, and I had no idea what I was going through. It was extremely difficult for me to breathe. I was giddy. There was um, sound in my lungs that I could not understand. Um, the sad part was there was no way to contact anybody. My mobile phone was out of reach and after my first full day of trek, I reached a village which had exactly one house, just one house. What amazed me was they were perfectly happy there. As I struggled my way in and I reached that village, I had to spend the night there. I met a couple of fellow trekkers who looked at me and they said maybe I should go back. I said I had already reached an altitude of 16,100 feet and I wasn't turning back without understanding what this was all about. I saw this village, it had nothing, no schools, no shops, no basic amenities, just vast farmland. I moved into this and I managed the trek, but I came away so, I stayed there for three days, but I was so inspired that I stayed on and did another longer trek. Here's what I ran into. That's me. This is how people of Ladakh cross uh, many villages. There aren't roads, so sometimes you have to cross um, the river. This is a flowing river underneath. It's a very small little piece of uh, basket, for want of a better word. People take this for granted, and they work very well with it. I ran into the school. This is the entire school. It's exactly eight children. That's one of the teachers. The school actually has two teachers. Now, where was the other teacher, you asked me? Well, that's what I asked him. He said, oh, she has gone back to the city of Leh to get midday meal supplies. And how long would that take her? This took me three days to reach this little tiny village called Hankar. So how, much, how long would it have taken her to reach there and come back? Possibly an entire week. And during that time, this teacher, if you can call him a headmaster, teacher, everything rolled into one. He was taking care of all the kids from pre-primary all the way up till grade five. The school still exists, this was 2010. I came back, I was completely blown, and I said something needs to be done. So a little bit about my background. I'm a corporate techie having worked across uh, the US and uh, Malaysia and India, and I quit it all to work with children and I was teaching. So when I saw these schools, um, I was really inspired as a teacher. I thought I could change the world. I thought we could do something different from these schools. Little did I realize that I hadn't bargained for what this land was all about. In 2010, there was a flood. And during the flood, um, Ladakh, as you all know, Ladakh uh, was pretty badly affected, but it was in the accessible areas. So I took a whole bunch of my, my students who were my school students, and I took them to Ladakh, and I said, let's do some Let's help some schools out. This is an image of 
uh, what we did for the rehabilitation of one of the schools, a little tiny village called Lingshit, takes three days of a walk to reach there. We were carrying supplies for this school. This is the only, the largest school in there. We said 100 kids. You're saying a school that's large is 100. The average school size is 20. 20 kids in an entire school. This is a village. This is a picture of us carrying supplies. We had to drop our vehicle here, and we couldn't move any further. This is the last more triple point. The temperatures at this point were minus 20 degrees. This is a picture of us having left our vehicle there for five days just so we could move on foot. Nobody re removed the vehicle. The vehicle remained there. This is how we carried our things on horseback. It took us two and a half days to finally reach the village. And these are the passes that we had to cross. Mind you, I had only seen three or four schools at this point. This is the fourth school that I saw. And it blew my mind. This is the 16, almost 17,000 feet pass. In fact, my foundation is named after this pass. And this is an image of 100 school kids just waiting on the mountaintop for us to reach because they knew we were bringing them something. And nobody had ever reached there before with so much goodies. We were carrying notebooks. We were carrying furniture. And this is a picture of the village. And this is a picture of these kids actually taking these furniture, these little pieces of uh, desks and chairs into their classroom. I came back entirely inspired. I said, I have to quit. So I quit. I quit and I said, what are we going to do in a region like this? They need education. They, their education system is in English. When I sat in the schools and I saw their, uh, their textbooks, I realized that they had no way of knowing what is happening in the outside world. The, the kind of uh, vegetables, the fruits, the basic infrastructure that we take for granted, these people have absolutely no idea. And how did the children even look at these things? And how will they hope to learn? So I said, can we take this to them? So I formed 17,000 Feet Foundation with just an idea, saying, OK, I'm going to quit my job. And this is what we're going to do. I persuaded my husband as well, who coincidentally happens to be a Ladakhophile as well. We did the research and we realized that Ladakh had a thousand schools. Where are these thousand schools? What do we do with them? And that's when we realized our problem was much larger than we imagined. And the terrain and the altitude and the weather, the temperature right now in Ladakh could be minus 40. There are, there are regions which go down to minus 60. These are schools that are running out of tents. It's a really cute thing if you see the flaps of the tent. The tents have the school name written on it. Every morning, the child comes in, opens the tent door very proudly, and he opens up the school and cleans it up for the day. So we decided we have to do something. Our Eureka moment, there's always a Eureka moment that comes with it uh, before you start something huge. We said, if there's so many schools, why isn't something happening there? And we realized that nobody really knew what was happening. Nobody even knew these schools existed. And if I happened to stumble onto this, if I was inspired enough to do something in these schools, there are hundreds of people, maybe thousands of people who would do this. A lot of people visit Ladakh annually, almost 2 lakh tourists visit. And we said, if we could inspire them, these children cannot come out. These villages do not want to go out, the villagers. But if we can inspire others to come this far, can we bring in some change? And here's the cool thing. What we realized when we visited, we mapped every single school of Ladakh. Each district, it took us about three to four months, some total of about seven months to geomap all of these schools. And every school was in existence. Every villager was happy. They were fine where they were. They just needed a little bit more. They are not poor. They, they have a lot of, com they are very happy where they are. So we said, why then are we doing anything? What we realized was they need a little bit of exposure. They need a little bit better access to health care. They need few job opportunities that does not need them to migrate. Young children today migrate alone to the cities. They're sometimes as young as three years old. So we said, if the culture is there, instead of having them move out, how can, how can we bring the outside world to them? Technology came to my rescue. It helped the fact that I am a corporate techie. So we said, what if we put all the schools in a map? If we told you these schools exist, can we use the outsiders? Can we use your help to reach out to them? <coughs> so we built a platform called Map My School. Um, put all of these 971, 983, I think, at this point, schools in a map. 
and be mapping it to popular trekking routes. And every page now, every school now has a page. Every school has its own little private page where it tells you where it is, how, how do you get there, more than anything else, what it needs. So we said, cool, that's great. We built Map My School, but is it enough? Will outsiders really go there? It is tough to reach them. Mind you, many of these villages take a few days to exist, uh, to, to reach. Beyond mapping, the minute we collected the data, we realized how much more could be done. We saw the data, we realized they need something really simple. They needed books, they needed, um, I wish I could say computers, but there's no electricity there. Um, they needed desks and chairs, they needed simple things for children to play. I mean, the last time, every time I go to the school, I look at the children, they have nothing to play with. They just kind of take a piece of paper, roll it into a ball and kick it around and they're happy. They take, they take a rope and the girls are skipping. They're really, really happy. So if we could encourage somebody to go there and we could tell them, look, the school needs this. We can send them there with that extra thing that he or she can carry. More than that, I'm not sure how many of you will go. I'm not sure how many people can go. More than that, we have this information. So as a foundation, can we organize and structure the programs that we can do into these schools? So we set up libraries. Simple things like books. They have never seen a storybook in their lives. They just have these really thick books in English that they have to read. They learn three languages from grade one. And it is really hard on them. And considering the medium of instruction is English, we decided that if we gave them exposure to the outside world through libraries, it would help. A very interesting thing. If you ask a Ladakhi child to draw something, he's only going to draw a mountain, a river, a yak, and a typical Tibetan prayer flag, or Ladakhi prayer flag, and a monastery. After we set up our books, we set up our library, the doings changed. Their imagination changed. They were drawing octopuses. They were drawing seas. They were drawing mermaids. They were drawing fruits they'd never seen before. It was amazing to see. And these teachers who initially came in, these are all teachers, by the way, the ones you see in the picture. These teachers who I initially thought would tell me, oh my god, don't give me an extra thing to do in my school. They said, can you please tell us what to do with these books? These children, they leave, had never had exposure of this kind. So we started conducting workshops. I have a team now. They, they call, I call them the wandering storytellers. They, they go every month to schools to tell stories to children. And then we realized a simple thing. Children sitting on cold floors. Children go to school in minus 15 degrees. Whereas here in, in the plains, I think we shut our schools at 6 degrees. So we said, what if we could help them get them furniture? Colorful furniture. We've set up furniture in so many schools today. Playgrounds. I've set up playgrounds in schools which are at 15,000 feet altitude. All villages in Ladakh are at an altitude of about at least 9,000 feet or more. The highest school we work in is at about 15,800 feet. These children have never seen these kind of things before more than anything else. Uh, the villagers come out to us and say, can we sit on these slides? Uh, can we play on them? And we say, yeah, sure, go on it. <coughs> bunk beds. We've set up bunk beds in, in the hostels. There actually are little hostels. The amazing thing about what I'm trying to say is these, the schools existed. We didn't have to do anything in terms of that. We didn't have to encourage the children or the families to send their children to school. They were already inspired. They wanted education. So we just made it slightly nicer for them, slightly better for them so that they continue sending their children to school. We weren't here to change the world. We were there to say, your world is fantastic. Can we help you a little bit more to keep it that way? Here is some of our volunteers and my team members conducting workshops with these children. For them, it, it opened up their eyes. And what was amazing was how much it impacted all of us. Our entire team is Ladakhi, but we have a lot of volunteers people from outside who come in and help. And what was amazing was we realized that the impact on the outsider was possibly double of that of what these people were getting. It's an amazing experience. So we created another program. We call it the Volunteerist at 17,000 feet. We're a not-for-profit. In case I haven't mentioned that before, I should have said it. We're a not-for-profit, and we're working to improve lives in very remote regions of Ladakh. But we decided we need more people to get involved in our cause. And we wanted these people to go into these villages, so why not make it easy for them? 
why not give them an opportunity versus just saying, here is a map and please go. So we structured programs, just like we structured programs to do in the schools, we structured programs for these individuals, or families, or groups of people, or corporate groups. And we say, you want to go to Ladakh. Ladakh is a beautiful place. But in your, take 10 days of your time. You need just three days to do your tourism circuit. That's all it takes. But give us five days of your time. In those five days, I'll train you what you can do. We will show you how much of your world you can bring to these little children across these hundreds of tiny little hamlets. And if you can go there, you will help us increase the depth of our work. And the amazing thing, the money that the volunteers pays, it helps the village. It helps the foundation cover some costs. And suddenly, this village, which has never seen visitors for centuries, is now getting people from the outside. In the tourism circuit in Ladakh, there are only about 10 or 15 percent of the villages are covered by tourism. Today, thanks to us, 100 more villages are covered. It's not at the same scale, but it is inspiring to see how uh, we have started a bit of an organic movement. People come in, they make friends in these villages, they stay, and they come back again and spend a little bit more. Now, in these schools, what we have managed to do in just three and a half years, we've set up libraries in 200 schools. We have now geographically expanded from Leh districts to Kargil district. Ladakh is exactly two districts. And what is amazing is when we started off working in Leh district, we realized that if you can do, if we can do this in such a harsh terrain, in an area where so much can be done, or how difficult it is, there is a potential to scale. There is a potential to move the same model to other areas. So we moved. This year, we moved to uh, Kargil district as well. We've set up playgrounds in 25 schools. We've uh, given furniture to 25 schools. Bunk beds, like you've seen. And this year, one of our pet projects, something we've been trying to do, we actually translated books in, um, uh, into Ladakhi. They speak, a, they speak a language called Ladakhi. It's also called Boti. They've, like I said, they've never seen storybooks. And um, it, this is in our, uh, uh, in our effort to go and reach out and take the outside world to them. We translated about 21 titles. So 21,000 storybooks, we had gone and given it to all the schools in one district. And that's an amazing thing. So right now with Cargill District, right now, in fact, I just came back yesterday from a, um, from a teacher training. We provide teacher training as well. So in, in temperatures when it's minus 25 degrees, 17,000 feet with its steam, we are there in Ladakh training teachers on various aspects. We have now become the bridge. We are connecting Ladakh to the outside world. And you see now the possibilities are endless. Ladakh is just a pilot for us. From here, we are hoping we can go to other regions which are completely remote and completely untouched. There are lots of not-for-profits in the region, but almost none of them go to the villages that we go to. Even the local Ladakhis do not go to the area that we go to. So if we've been oh. able to do it in Leh district, we have, we have been able to do it in Kargil district. There's Sikkim, there's Himachal, there's Uttarakhand, there's the Northeast. The really remote villages that is so difficult to go through. So using technology and the power of people, we're saying these distance is all in your mind. We've shown you where it is. So we put all of these 900 schools in a map. Will you help us reach out to them? We're starting out on our livelihood programs tomorrow, uh, in, in the coming year. The idea is how do we help keep these villages back in their homes, back in their culture, back where they are happy. There is so much that's happening in the village. Can we just provide them a connect to the outside world so they continue to live inspired lives and continue to inspire us along the way? So that's 17,000 feet foundation, which is three-year-old organization. So if we put all these villages and schools in a map, will you help us reach out to them? Thank you. <laughs>